chat. This is Zerg versus Barcode Protoss. What did we do this game? What happened? I'll take you through it step by step. This match has a fan favorite Protoss style here, known as Sky Toss. Most Zergs who I talk to, they love facing Sky Toss, especially Void Ray zooming around and blasting their bases. It's their favorite. So you're in luck, you get to see me fight some Sky Toss. Probe goes into my base. Second Overlord is looking around my natural for cannon rushes. 18 gas, 17 pool. Normal. Normal solid Zerg stuff. Overlord's going to scout in front of the natural. The probe is looking for a third. My first Overlord is about to get to their side of the map. I'm really just kind of in the mindset of a detective against Protoss. Protoss has so many weird ways they can play. We'll see what it is. Pull off gas at 100, get metabolic boost going. Four lings to clear the probe off the third base so I can take it. And this overlord is looking at that cyber core. No research, no research, no research. So it's so not early no ground. Inject the main, creep the nat, make a third queen in the main, group up the two queens at the natural. And I see this, uh, a full wall off. And then my links immediately go scout around the corners of the map because I saw the probe go up that way. And I have faced Protoss who have gone for like a quick four or five gate all in on this map. So I'm just doing my diligence with the links. Oh, we found a probe. I didn't even notice that. Did you see it on the mini map? We found a probe. I wonder if that changed their plan now that I think of it. It's possible they would have gone for a ground play. They do have warp gate research going. They have two gateways. No, there's a stargate. I don't know. There's no way of knowing what this probe would have done. But it's here. And my lings found it. Hey, there's no proxy pile in there now. Good job, Zerglings. Proud of you. So now the Protoss is in a sticky situation. They can't get out of their base unless they get a warp prism. And they can't expand, really, either. Unless they kill one of their gateways, so... They did eventually take a third. I'm wondering how, when, and why. So I'm just droning up here. I'm going for a lair. Mainly because of... The previous match I just played against Terran, where they went Mass Banshee and didn't have Spire or Overseer in time. So this game, I really don't want to get caught off guard by random air bullshit. <laughs> but I'm droning up. Queens are trying to attack this Void Ray, and I really, really want to scout. Because one of the most frustrating ways to die as a Zerg, at least for me, it's not to die to straight up Sky Toss. It's whenever they go one Void Ray and then like 10 gateways of Charge Zealots. When I lose to that, I feel like a very silly person. Let's turn down the, the Abathur for a second. Appreciate you, Abathur. Okay. Overseer's looking for a scout. I saw the Void Ray there, so I'm trying to find a way to swoop around it. It's kind of like dodging a Viking. I want to get a scout, but it's difficult to do so. Queens are injecting. I'm making more queens. If they do hit me with ground, at least I have a bunch of transfuses for my roaches. And I did not skip a roach war in here. So I'm trying not to gamble on anything. I'm trying to check off all the boxes. I'm getting roach speed. I'm getting a spire. So I have a way to deal with air and a way to deal with ground. I'm not going for the standard approach that I normally do against Oracle Adept Protoss. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The read. Dude, we saw everything we needed to see. Triple Stargate. You can afford nothing more than that on two bases. So I know everything that's going on. This is like the best scout you can possibly get. Just floating directly above their whole plan. Man. So good. A complete scouting read. Oh, look. Void race. Chat's favorite. So I'm adding some spores, learning from last game. Queen's injecting. 
here, I think if I played this perfectly, I might split my queens into two groups. I have 11 queens, though, so it's pretty good. Getting transfuses off here. I added some more spores in my third just to try to make this defense a little bit easier on myself. Queens are just running from base to base. And this is the power of the Void Ray, right? They can use the dead space early on, and you can't really beat this with early Corruptor. Corruptors don't trade well with Void Rays, so you want to get some Corruptor to deal with the carriers later, but you kind of need some Queens as a stepping stone to be able to get there. So they kill one of my gases here. And I pose the question to you, what is the most valuable unit in the game for me? Well, the answer is it just died and it was a Zergling or a Changeling. But it expired, it wasn't killed. So there's still no third base. So even though we lost an extractor, some drones, some of my queens, I have a fourth and a fifth base coming up, even though I canceled one base. And I have an air upgrade going. I have queens. I'm in a great spot. It's still difficult to kill this kind of army, though, even if you are ahead, because I can't just walk across the map with queens off creep. And queens trade pretty poorly against static defense like cannons. Okay, the Overseer is going for a follow-up scout. Doesn't really see too much different, but it's fun. Now I'm creeping, expanding, I'm droning. I'm not scared of any ground attack at all, so you notice I have no ground units aside from queens. I'm not really trying to make any either. There's nothing for me to do with them. I can't bash the natural wall down with void ray shooting me. So I'm just going to replace Vision, get some Lings out, continuing to spam Queens. And my in-game army that I'm going for is uh, Ultra Queen Corruptor Viper. And if the Queens die, that's fine. When you see the double Stargate and then they do a charge let all in at seven minutes, yeah. That's a major bamboozle. The thing is, though, bamboozling is not against the rules. So frustrating as it may be, it is a valid and viable tactic that you need to be prepared to deal with. I see a couple adepts walking out. I know they had two gateways in the wall. Out of curiosity, how did they get out? They killed one of the gateways and made a pylon. Okay. This is still hard to bust into. If you had like 25 banes, you could just boom, 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 hit all three of these pylons and then get onto these probes, but it's a very expensive wall to break because it was an expensive wall to build. They're going for air weapons now and a third base. So I can't really run at them. They're pretty safe because they have two base of Stargate units. But you can see with only two bases for this long, like this is nine minutes in, the main base is mining out. They're down to four patches left here. So these probes, look at them. They're just waiting for their opportunity to harvest minerals. There's like three probes sitting at it, staring at it. So I'm making money. Big time. Look at the income. Oh my god! That's nice. Let's enjoy that right now. Wow. 91 drones. Rich beach. Okay, we got this base too. 16 of 16 mining minerals. And I lost to Sky Toss a couple days ago. And uh, Chat was talking about Lambo was just covering the map in spores. I tried to take some inspiration from that this game, and I was looking at my bases and was like, you know what? What if their whole army showed up here? How would this base hold up? This base would die. But if we look at this base in the future, you're going to see a whole bunch of spores there. Here we go. Now I'm spamming the spores. It's just spamming them. Because I got over 100 drones. So I can basically just keep spamming drones and spores, and that's going to make fewer and fewer places on the map where my opponent can take a good fight. Can they take a good fight in my main? Um, not really. There's five spores right here. So the interceptors that fly in are going to get shot by five spores at once. This base, seven spores at it. This base, three spores, but also the queens. This base, oh my goodness. All right, I got a little bit carried away here. But it's nice, because if they run at this base, I can just walk my Corruptor, Queen, whatever over, and defend this with a bunch of Spore support. 
So there are no bases that I have that are only one spore anymore because I know my opponent is going pure air and they simply cannot afford anything else. If my opponent was rich and they had earlier expansions and maybe Zealot run by, I could mix in some uh, spines there too. But for this match, really, they just have enough Archons to threaten the Corruptors, but they don't have enough money to also do like a 15 Zealot Yeet at my bases. So Corruptors are just kind of scooting and shooting, getting rid of some Interceptors. And I'm super rich. You can see my income for minerals and gas. 103 drones. I don't really need a ground army here, but I am teching into ultras. So ultra armor and uh, ultra speed. I'm getting plus three carapace for air. I'm getting plus one armor for ground and plus three melee for ground. Ultras tend to be a hard counter to the units that uh, threaten corruptors the most like Archons and High Templar. So having some capacity for Ultra Tech seems good. Now I'm just gonna throw down even more Spores. It looks like they're getting pretty close to a max out. So I wanna just make sure that there's no angle where my opponent can go in and take a fight that's good for them. There are just too many Spores everywhere they wanna fly in. Okay, before they arrive at my base, I'm going to check the Structures tab we have 36 spores this game. 39. 41. 42. Wow. The answer to life, the universe, and everything. 43, 44, 45. I have 45 spores. And we're both pretty much maxed. My opponent has more supply and army than I do, and fewer workers. I have more workers and fewer army supply. But I have these spores, and watch these spores in the fight. Look at these spores, consistently dealing damage. Every interceptor they kill is lowering my opponent's DPS in the fight, the corruptors, throwing parasitic bomb onto the army, dealing a lot of damage to the air. The queens I could have microed more, but really they're going to trade pretty well just on their own because they have so many spores behind them. The spores also act as detectors, so I can see the units that are trying to be invisible from the mothership's ability. Now I have Ultra coming in, and I only have like 10 Corruptors left in this army, but these carriers are heckin' out of juice. They've got like half their interceptors, if that. This one only has one interceptor. So it might look like, okay, there's still quite a few carriers here, but if they have no interceptors, their DPS is shit. That's how it is. And now we really see the power of Zerg. The power of Zerg is not in our ability to make a really strong army. It's in our ability to remax fast after we trade. My opponent simply doesn't have enough money to remax fast. And the production time, eh, it takes a long time. And they didn't use Chrono because they were focusing on the fight. So because I have almost every base on the map and I have a ridiculously huge uh, worker count, we're great. This is fantastic for me. They were all in with this push. That's the major disadvantage of staying on two bases for a super long time. Is yes, you're very safe from being attacked, but when it comes to maxing out and remaxing, you just can't keep pace. You simply cannot. Look at the void race getting all excited trying to fight the corruptors, but then the corruptors fall back to the spores and multiple interceptors die. And they have plus two armor, plus one attack. And then we get to just go in, focus a mothership, clean up the carriers. I've got 35 corruptors, plus three air armor is about to finish. And that's the game. So the key things here dealing with sky toss. First step is to scout it. So the overseer scout gave me the information that I needed to drone up to 100. And then just being the mayor of Spore City. I had like 50 spores pretty much by the time their attack arrived. 50 spores and also uh, having a whole bunch of bases and a whole bunch of queens. So we had 10 bases and a hive. I guess that's uh, nine bases if you count this hatchery here. But yeah, great game, pretty clean, pretty straightforward in dismantling sky toss. They did some void ray harass, but it wasn't enough. 
there you go. I want to see how many workers I made that game real quick. 177. All you have to do is triple your opponent's APM. 